Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Mark here and today we are back with another video. Now today what we're gonna do is to see how we can fetch data or scrape data from any website with Java. I see a lot of videos on YouTube where um, so many people fetch data but they are pretty much using you know the good old beautiful soup in Python. Now today we're gonna use um, we're gonna use Java and uh, a package called JSoup and figure out how we can do this in Java. All right. So now if you're new here, just consider subscribing to the channel. And cause that way, that's how, you know, the YouTube algorithm um, can figure out that we can, that we are literally doing something and we're educating people about, you know, web development and simplifying software development in various perspectives. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. And um, at the end of the video, we shall, you know, you know, need you to like, you know, comment onto the description below, comment down below. At the end of the video, we shall compare the two and look at which is better. What do you think is the best alternative to, you know, between Python and Java when it comes to collecting data or, you know, from any website. Now, what we're going to be doing today is to look at this simple website, get the title and then get the price. All right. Now we can um, later on, I'll show you how to make computations on this price and then, you know, do something more advanced than just fetching or scraping data. Without further ado, let's get into the video. And um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to start a simple, all right, I'm going to use IntelliJ in this perspective. And our project is going to be called Scraper, all right. Okay, and uh, you can save this on desktop or anywhere you prefer. And this is our project. So the first thing that we're going to do is to use JSOP dependency. Now, what you can do, you can open up the pom.xml. This is like the package.xml, uh, package.json in Node. All right. So this is pretty much the same thing. And what we're going to do is to import or add a dependency called JSOP. Okay. So to, to add that, yeah, I just pressed command N. This is in IntelliJ. And then I'm um, going to look up JSOP. So I believe this is the one. Okay. Yeah, should be coming from org.jsoup.soup. So um, now that I've added that, just to make sure it's in there. So this is the dependency. Alternatively, you can um, come over here and then um, hold on, JSoup Maven, all right, dependency. So that will pretty much lead you to over there. It should be the one, then copy this and paste it into your project. So now what I'm going to do um, is just to reload um, our Maven, which you can do is come here, reload Maven, and then the project should be now going. So now that we have this dependency, this dependency has a bunch of classes that we shall need. The next thing we're going to do is to go into our Java and then create a Java class, which is going to call, um, we're going to call it web scraper. Okay. And then the first thing we're going to do is to create a main method PSVM. And then now the first thing that we're going to do is to create um, a URL that, you know, is going to be our endpoint. Now get over here, get this, add it in there. Now that we have that available, now uh, we're going to try to fetch, you know, the HTML contents from this URL. And in that, we're going to create a variable called document and then use uh, JSOP to connect to that um, URL. 
URL, then use the get method to get that URL. Now, whatever, um, um, first of all, let's import JSOUP to be available. Now, um, um, all this data, okay, is gonna be stored into a document, okay? Document, there we go. So now let's import that. So URL dot get. So now, because um, because there is a possibility this URL may fail, may not be available, what we're gonna do is to wrap it into a try catch. Okay. Uh, and the exception that we're gonna be fetching is gonna be the, the IO exception. And then in here we shall print the stack trace. The difference between uh, printing a stack trace and uh, printing, you know, e dot get message is that this stack trace prints a hierarchy of of exceptions that happened and shows you exactly where the exception came from. So now in here we can attempt to fetch that. Okay, we're gonna uh, attempt to fetch the documents within this URL. So now the next thing we're gonna do is after we've got the documents, now we need a list of these books, each and every book. It's like now we're trying to assign something into an array list. And the way we do that is that we're gonna say books is equal to now the document that has our data dot now select. There's this method called select, which is a CSS query. Now this can query HTML tags, can query classes, and you can also query IDs in HTML. So now let's get the class for all these books, okay? You, we need, our target is to get something that is similar in all these books. Now, when you look at all these div sections, okay, if HTML is new to you, so a div section, most times items are wrapped into div sections, okay? So now this is a div, this is a div, this is a div, this is a div, okay? Now, within this div, it's not, when you look at the HTML here, there is nothing really unique. You, you can see that if you know a little bit of CSS, this means that um, when I click here, this is a column on extra small size screens. It should show six, you know, and whatnot. I'm not gonna go through the details of that. What I, our main focus is this product, uh, product pod. Now this class under the template tag article is unique and is unique to only to each and to each book. You see that when I click on this book, that's an object book and that's an object book. And if I minimize that, all these lists have a product pod. Now, we can now pull in those product pods, okay? And, um, you know, to get a prod, a class, is you use a dot, okay? To get an ID, you use a hashtag. And to get an element, you use um, the, um, you know, HTML element. So now, now that we have that, now we can see, um, we have access to those and now we want to store them in what you would call like an array list. So in JSOUP, we have this class that can help us to get all a list of elements that contain the class product pod. Now what we're going to do is to import it as well. Okay. So now that we have, imagine, take this as to be um, an array list or a list of items that have the product pod class. So now that we have access to that, uh, we can now loop through this. And in that, we're going to say loop um, for, you know, every book in books. Okay. So this can be any name, but this has to be the name of the list. Now we need to put, to assign a, um, a data type to this book, uh, you know, cause that's what's gonna be uh, um, 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 returned, okay? So now to do that, we're gonna use 
the element data type. So now the element data type is a data type that is within the elements, okay? So now we can import the element class. It should come from JSOUP, okay? So now what we're saying is that we're looping through a group of books and we are returning every single book. Now, every single book has a title. Okay, you can say book dot select. And how do we know the title? Okay, so to get the title, we need to come over here. And you see, that's the title. Okay, but this text content is not immediate to the H3. Okay, there is an anchor tag. So how do we get that? Remember, I say the select query can be used to get HTML tags, can be used to get classes and IDs. Now to get the HTML tag, you simply just say H3 and the child element, which is an anchor tag. You're going to ask yourself why that? Because um, you're going to wonder why we are not simply using the anchor tag to get the title. It's because this anchor tag is not unique. If you just use the anchor tag, that's not going to be unique to this title. This is an anchor tag. This is an anchor tag. All those are anchor tags. Okay. And we need something that is unique within this. Okay. Within this um, book object. Okay. And H3 plus its child element, which is the anchor tag, makes more sense. The next thing is that we're going to need the price as well. Okay. The price is unified to the price. Okay, so now this time around we have a price, a color to the price. So the next thing we're gonna do is that since we have this, we need to convert this into text. That's a method from JSOUP. Okay, I mean from the um, select class. So now um, the next thing we're gonna do is we need, remember we said we need the price as well, is equal to book.select then in here we can include the class name dot convert it to text okay so now that we have that now we can print everything all together whereby we have title plus uh sorry need to correct this this is the variable title plus a space then plus the price Okay, and then before the loop, we can make this nicer by saying mm, salt. We can clean this up with that, and then we can say salt. Um, Feel free to write whatever you want. Uh, you can write a title here called books. Mm -hmm. Then okay. So now we have a title, and then we can do the same thing and after the loop close everything out so now let's go ahead and print this fingers crossed and there we are okay there we are so we have let me clean this up run that again so we have you know all the titles and their prices okay beautiful absolutely beautiful so now we can advance this and make some queries on this okay so i can say if let's say we need to get books that are less than with um you know less than can say command three less than 20 dollars 20 euros, I mean pounds, okay? And to do that, we're gonna see. Um, first, we're gonna, uh, since this is a computation, let me let me show you how you can do this. So you see if, if, okay? 
we're gonna print that so we're gonna say if um, the price I'm gonna show you how to go around this so remember this price is a string it whenever you're scraping um, data from any website it comes as a string okay so now to make that computation we need to compare it with a double in order to make sense okay so now what we can do is to create string actual price actual price is equal to this price dot sub string okay um, and then in here we can get access to the actual price starting at remember this, this is a string has a list of characters so we are we are ignoring the pound sign and we're only getting the actual um, numbers themselves so now since we have actual price in here we can say actual price is greater than is less than 20 bucks remember now this is a string and you're comparing it with a number okay so now I um, can add a zero there doesn't really matter so what we can do is to convert it into a double okay why a double because the prices are in the prices are in uh, you know have a decimal point okay and this is how pretty much you can do this so um, let's go through this so we created a price took off you know stripped off the pound sign and we're left with only numbers and then we converted this into a double using the double wrapper class and compared it if it's less than 20 bucks and now we are printing a list of all those books that are less than 20 bucks voila there we go okay now i hope you like this this is how simple and straightforward you would do this in java i understand that in python you would sort of like need more computations or more methods to create classes that pull ids and classes and everything i'll post another video that shows how you can do that in python using beautiful so http requests but for now you see how simple this package jsoup was straightforward to script data from any website now one thing you need to remember is that you need to be careful when you're scraping data from any website you need to read the terms and conditions when you're fetching data from any website because not all websites will allow you to fetch data from them okay stay away from legal suits because that can be dangerous to you and yourself and your family all right so now if you like this video please go ahead and smash the like button if you're new here subscribe and if you just returning to the channel make sure you comment like you know so that we can show the youtube algorithm that this website um this channel is way better and it's worth it and it can teach a lot of content to developers as usual my goal is to make web development software development easier to everybody and um, as usual just keep on coding see you in the next video